King Yeshe O came to the throne of Gugei in the 10th century, at a time when Buddhism had considerably declined in the Trans Himalaya. What troubled him most was that even the little practice of the religion which continued had degenerated and was coloured by local magical rites. In 975 AD, Ye Shei O sent Ringchen Zhangpo to Kashmir. This arduous journey to a centre of Buddhism was to bring back scriptures with the original and pure knowledge of the faith. The mission was also to bring back artists to build, paint and sculpt new temples in Gugei. Rinchen Zhangpo spent 17 years in Kashmir, completing his own education and guiding his disciples. In the years to come, he became known as the revered Lotsava, or Great Translator. His translations brought to Gugei the true knowledge of Buddhism which the king had sought. In the 4th century, in the Buddhist centres of Kashmir, the Yogacharya school of thought had developed. It was believed that the most effective method for the attainment of the highest truth was through meditation or yoga, which means to become one with the eternal. The different aspects of the wisdom of the Buddha were personified as the five Buddhas. Akshobhaya, Ratnasambhava, Amitabha, Amoghasiddhi, and Vairochana. Vairochana, who symbolizes the mirror like wisdom of the Buddha's enlightenment, is the supreme Buddha in the Yoga Tantras. Rinchen Zangpo had studied scriptures related to mandalas of Vairochana during the time he spent in Kashmir. In this period of the second diffusion of Buddhism in the Trans Himalaya, it was mainly temples devoted to Verochana which were set up. It is believed by the people of the Trans Himalayan lands that Rinchen Zangpo made 108 monasteries and temples. He had brought 32 artists to Gugei from the Valley of Kashmir. They were to create the foundations of a lasting tradition of Buddhist art in the Trans Himalaya. The painters and sculptors from Kashmir brought with them a highly sophisticated form of art which was deeply rooted in the classic Sanskrit texts of India. In the Indian philosophy of aesthetics, it is believed that the ecstasy we experience on seeing something truly beautiful, whether it be in nature or in art, is akin to the final bliss of salvation. The moment of the experience of beauty is one of the highest states, in which the veils of the illusory world are lifted and one sees the grace which underlies all of creation. Thus the ecstatic response to beauty was seen as a glimpse of the truth itself. From the 5th century onwards, the hallmark of the finest Indian art was the deep and inward look on the faces of the figures. The art of these monasteries continues the sublime tradition. What makes the paintings and sculptures here unique is a sense of lilting grace which awakens joy within us. <laughs> <laughs> 